Olympic caster. Nowhere near where I need to be. I get it. Stop teasing me just because I'm enjoying myself, Goldie. I don't even say a word. No, you're just making all those faces. You get any more bites? You're just going to finish your day with one fish, that's it? Me too. No, you lost one. You didn't get two, you landed one, you lost one. You just lost another one. Lost or you missed? Yeah. I don't want to come in right now. That fish right next to you. How's that? What are you fishing, like a foot down? No, I'm doing the, uh, what is it, the toffee cup. Oh, you're going just below where you can see just your bait. Just below where I can no longer see it. Lunker. <laughs> That's why I had to switch to the 10 foot rod because they're that big. It's just I needed more leverage to handle them. Yeah. Wow, they're hungry though, eh? Like, every one of these has taken the jigs way back. I don't know if I've ever actually explained the coffee cup theory on camera, have I? I don't watch the videos. <laughs> okay, so just in case I haven't, the coffee cup theory is something I read in a magazine. Um, I want to say it was called Fishing Facts. It's an older magazine. Um, I think the article probably would have been, I was young, so it would have been like 84, 85, maybe, when I read that article. It was, it was Okay, was, hold on, hold on, you have to start with, back in my day, I was reading this magazine. Back in my day, I was reading one of them, their picture books with words that came on their newsstand. There was no hibbity dibbity internet thing. Wow. Yeah. You yeah. went the hibbity dibbity, did you? I don't know, it just felt like the right words. But, yeah, it would have been mid-80s when I read this article. And it was specific to crappy fishing. Um, you know, black crappy, white crappy, but it kind of applies to pan fish in general. Um, I've never really felt it applied to perch fishing because quite often I'm fishing very deep water for perch. But this article stated that these, this guy was fishing around structures, uh, sunken trees, rock piles, and stuff like that. But he had trouble finding the right depth when his... Oh, you missed one. Um, when his sonar, his uh, portable sonar, it, was, it wasn't working for whatever reason. So he couldn't determine what... Oh, you got one? That one came off too. What's wrong with your hooks, Goldie? Not setting them. That one was a decent one too. Um, stop interrupting my story with your fish. <laughs> but yeah, the, for whatever reason, I think it was the sonar wasn't working or, or something, but he couldn't determine the proper depth that the fish were at to consistently drop it down to them. So what he did is he had a white coffee cup in the, in the boat or on shore with him. I don't remember that particular detail, but he had a white coffee cup. He tied it on a, a piece of cord and he lowered that down. And once he got that to the point that he could no longer see the brightness of the coffee cup, so the coffee cup disappeared into the um, whatever level of clarity the water had, the crappie that he was fishing for were right at that level. So as soon as you could lose sight of that coffee cup, they were like inches below that. And that's how he determined the depth to find the fish, and it worked for him quite well. And over the years, fishing for crappies and bluegills, I have found that coffee cup method to be absolutely killer. You know, that's, I don't carry a portable sonar with me. I don't have a castable sonar, even though they're out now. I would love to get my hands on one. I've 
we've used them for carp fishing and found them really neat. But for this style of fishing, I, just, I don't have one. So, like what Goldie's doing is we got these bright baits on. Just lower it down to the depth that you lose sight of it. And he's getting his bites. He's getting fish. So well, there's no proof that I'm catching fish. Well, I'm witnessing it. But yeah, it's it is an effective method, and we've used it ice fishing as well when the water's not clear where we've been ice fishing, and it's worked really well to find find the suspended fish. But yeah, just fishing just below that level where you can see your bait or the coffee cup. Excuse me, the coffee cup method. <laughs> it worked right there. Oh, perfect. That one was out a bit from the wall, eh? saw the line go a little bit slack but yeah really for this little bait I don't know how well you can see I've got a very small swivel right here just attaching my main line to a, a lighter um, I think this is eight pound mono mono then a swivel then I have six pound mono in clear my main line green so this depth here maybe 18 to 20 inches my swivel was still out of the water there when I got that bite. That seems to be the level that the bait disappears at. It's working. Get more bites? No, you're stealing all my fish. You're stealing all your fish. Sorry. Let me fish way over here. That's what we've been waiting for. We knew that there was some big ones in here. I've caught them over the years, but it's been a while. And again, just dropped it down just to out of the, the, the line of sight for that bait and smashed it, absolutely smashed it. So, you know, hopefully I, did, I described it well enough, the coffee cup method, uh, as it was referred to in that magazine I read all those years ago. And still, this is what, you know, more than 30 years ago I read that and it's still a tactic that I use and it's still very effective.